Well, Mark Ogden, we've done a few of these top five from one team since the Premier League began in 1992. I have to say this one, Manchester City, you would probably have the majority picking at least four of the five that you have gone with because their success recently is fresh in everyone's mind and they've had some world-class players. Let's start with your number one pick, your top pick for Manchester City in the Premier League. Who have you gone for? I've gone for Vincent Company. Now, it shows the impact he made that I've gone for a defender because it tends to be strikers or, and goal scorers that get the uh, attention. But I think Company was the absolute rock on which their success has been built. He signed for the club, I think, in the weeks before the Abu Dhabi takeover. He signed under Mark Hughes. And he was just an absolute fantastic captain, centre-half, great leader. I mean, right up to the final days of the club, he scored that stunning goal against Leicester last season, which pretty much clinched the title. Company was just, at his peak the best centre-half in the Premier League during his, during his era. And obviously, injuries caught up with him at times, but a fantastic player. Um, and City have missed his leadership, I think, since he left. Speaking of goals that helped win the title, or won the title, had to be a base for Sergio Aguero. Yeah, I mean, Aguero is now the all-time leading foreign scorer in the Premier League. He went past Thierry Henry in a season that's still on hold. And, you know, probably has the most iconic moment in Premier League history with the goal against QPR, which 93, seconds, 93 minutes and 20 seconds, I think it was, in, in to stop his time. So Aguero, for me, every year, totally consistent, scores goal after goal after goal, a brilliant striker. And when he leaves, his contract expires at the end of the 2021 season. When he leaves, it'll be a massive hole to fill because Aguero has been the guy that's been there through all City's big, big moments and big wins. Has there been a Manchester City player with a better engine than Yaya Toure? I don't think there has. And I think when Luis Suarez won the Football of the Year, I think it was in 2013-14, it was the season that Liverpool almost won the league. But Yaya Toure scored more than 20 goals for midfield for City last season. He was just an amazing, just a, just a powerhouse in midfield. He, he was box to box. He, he scored goals, never missed a penalty. Brilliant leader. Now, obviously, again, certain players have things that define them a little bit. And I think... Unfairly for Yaya Torre, people talk about the birthday cake. You know, that he, was, uh, he wasn't happy that he didn't get a birthday cake at the end of a particular season. It's a ridiculous story, but it takes away from the, the player that he was. He was a fantastic player, and City got him. How they got him from Barcelona when they did, and got so many good years at him, I don't know. Barcelona really missed out by letting him go. There's longevity, which is one thing, but to have longevity along with quality and class is something that David Silva has in abundance. Yeah, David Silva, again, you know, one of the, the great players in the Premier League era, just, just a clever player, a player that can, you know, control game from the attacking third, find, it, find a goal, create an assist. Just a lovely player. And again, I think sometimes with the Man City players, they tend to be a bit understated in terms of their, their status. I don't think they get the, the celebrity that maybe is afforded to players who've been great at United or Arsenal, Liverpool. That may be something to do with the kind of the worldwide appeal of those clubs, but... You know, for me, people like Silva and Aguero deserve to be up there with Thierry Henry, Eric Cantona, Cristiano Ronaldo, as these, as these great overseas players. Before we get to your, your other pick, because I want to have a disagreement with you about that, I want to have a, a quick word about those you didn't include that may have been in contention. I think you're, the four that we've discussed is very difficult to argue against. But you've got Fernandinho. You've also got the likes of Richard Dunn. If you remember, he won the Player of the Year, the Man City Player of the Year, in four consecutive years. So I know they didn't win that much back then, but they're certainly worth consideration. Yeah, I think Richard Dunn, I think... If I put him in, I think a lot of City fans would have thought I was uh, having a laugh at their expense. But yeah, you're right. He did have a, an impact. And people like George Kinkladze, a lot of players, mm -hmm. will t a lot of City fans will talk about his impact and Uwe Rosler in the early years. Of, yeah, I mean, it, people like Rosler and Dickhoff as well were, were big players mm -hmm. in, in City's, City's time frame. But I think what is interesting, are the, the players that I've picked and the players that you mentioned there, and my next pick, none were Pep Guardiola signings. It's fair. It's fair. Yeah. Now, it, it, something, something that yeah. might not be fair... Is your other choice? I would have picked Kevin De Bruyne. A lot of City fans would, I'm sure, picked him as well. You've gone Carlos Tevez. Why? I think Carlos Tevez. He he gave City the lift to where they are now because when he signed from United, well, he, he, United failed to take up the option on his contract at, at Old Trafford in 2009. When he signed for City, it was a it was a statement that Man City were there and a club to be taken seriously. And it was a real kind of shot across Man United's bows that all of a sudden Man City could compete with. Man United and get the best players and we'll never forget that legendary 
banner, the Welcome to Manchester banner, which defines Carlos Tevez's time there. Tevez was a fantastic player. He was, for me, he was Man City's Eric Cantona. He was the guy, he was the catalyst that, that everything came from Tevez Sarnik. He, he scored some amazing goals, won some amazing games. And obviously, he had that massive bust at Roberto Mancini when he refused to warm up on, on, the, on the side of the pitch against Bayern Munich. It was banned for a long time. But he came back and helped City win the league that season. He's a controversial character, but without Carlos Tevez, I think City would have taken much longer to get where they are now and uh, you ask many City fans and uh, you know they, they love Carlos Tevez he was, he was yeah. a player that, that it gave them the sense of belief and, and finally been able to put one over Man United and they've done that ever since for the last 10 years but they also like Kevin De Bruyne as well because he's not too bad is he? De Bruyne is a great player and I think you could, you could mention Raheem Sterling as well you know two players that have certainly in recent times have been, have been sensational but on to the point about the the players and, the, and the, the longevity, it is interesting that a lot of these players either signed under Roberto Mancini or under Mark Hughes, and it, it shows you the, the quality of players that City signed at the outset of this, this, this journey, this project. And, you know, Guardiola's come in and he's, he's made a great impact, but I haven't picked any of his players. You know, I haven't picked any of his signs because the legends at Man City, the players that have been there over the years that have contributed to several successes rather than the ones that have come along under, under Pep. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.